I'm Shan, this is Plus Story Time. I am here today to do a book haul. Um, in the last few weeks I've bought a lot of books. Um, yeah, one of the reasons was that bookshops reopened so we've done so they've been shut since um december so uh, it was just so fun to go to a couple of bookshops this week and buy some books um i also bought a pile of nine anyway um i've got quite a few different books i've got like a pile of horror i've got not that much fiction but i've got some young adult and quite a lot of non-fiction as well so i'll put little um timestamps below so that you can just go to whichever section you're kind of more interested in I'm going to start with the horror books. So that's, I think, the biggest pile. Um, the first two we, I got, these two here, I got from Waterstones yesterday. So there's The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher, which I really love the cover of. And this is about a woman who's got divorced and gone back to kind of like her family home. And she discovers like a hole in the wall that leads to a bunker that leads to like alternate realities portals to countless alternate realities and there's creatures there as well i like the sound of that one and then this one is the boatman's daughter by andy davidson um it's blurred by paul tremblay um i had this on my wish list and then when i saw that it was set in the bayou uh that was um it was sold so it's about a a girl called miranda crabtree and i think there's a mad preacher there's um, dark forces at work in the bayou, human and supernatural. So it's dark um, forces in the bayou. Yeah. yeah. Okay. These ones are online. So I got 12 Nights at Rotter House by J.W. Ocker. So I saw this thing on the, if you've seen the video that George Lyne put, put together of different um, people recommending their kind of scariest books. Uh, Bert was in it. I'll link it as well. I saw that Nakia had chosen this one. Um, and it sounded interesting. I was kind of interested in J.W. Ocker's other books. They're kind of non-fiction about being in kind of scary places. Um, but this is like a bit of a haunted house one. You can have a close up of that. It's got some blood on the cover there as well. And it's about a travel writer who specialises in creepy destinations. And then he's gone to this haunted house for two weeks to see what happens there. Very excited about this one as well. I've seen quite a few people kind of hauling this one. And this is Whispers Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Chapman. Um, and this is uh, kind of set in the 80s, like Satanic Panic. And who doesn't love a little bit of uh, Satanic Panic? Oh, and I think it's like a bit of a thing that happened in childhood and then 30 years later. Mm. Yeah. Classic. Yes. Oh, and it's also got at the back your friendly satanic panic reading and viewing list so it's got some films and fiction and non-fiction you should read one of which is rosemary's baby All right. which i'm going to be reading soon anyway so yeah and a reading group guide as well so this looks fun this one i've seen quite a few places as well this looks so good this is goddess of filth by v castro and it's the it's actually really tiny and it's one that's got like a a spine on the spine, which is pretty good. Oh, I didn't work that out. Ah, a spine yeah. on the spine. Mm. Um, this ended up being a little bit expensive because it's not really, I, I think I've, you know, it came from um, the USA. It's not actually published officially here. It starts about a summer night. That's why, like, summer is, is so good for horror. And it's some girls who hold a seance. It's fun and games at first, but their tipsy laughter turns to terror when the flames burn straight through their prayer candles. Um, and yeah, I think one of them gets possessed. That looks super good. And um, V Castro is a Mexican-American author from San Antonio, Texas, now residing in the UK. Co-founder of Fright Girl Summer, a platform to mar amplify marginalised vo voices. I'm going to have a look at that. She writes no Latinx novels of horror, erotic horror and science fiction, including her most recent Hairspray and Switchblades. I'm like really interested in everything I just read out there. I've got Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw, which is a young adult vampire novel set in New Orleans Fangfest in 1995. It says that Mina's having a summer to die for. Sounds really fun. Katie, 
by Michael McDowell. I love this cover. I don't know if you can quite make it out because it's kind of quite hard to see maybe. There's a kind of bloody hammer here. It's about a young girl that kind of kills people with a hammer in 1870s New York. Um, so it's kind of giving me like a little bit of Lizzie Borden kind of energy to it. Um, I think, yeah, but I don't really know that much about it. Um, it says that it's a bloody action-packed romp and a throwback to um, like the Penny Dreadfuls. And it's published on uh, Fallon Court Press and it came out in 1982 originally. I've got Empire of the Wild by Sherry Demolone. Um this one is about a woman whose husband disappears and then she kind of sees him, but he claims that he's not her husband. He's actually this kind of um, preacher who's trying to get everyone to uh, go with him to God. So it sounds like it might be a little bit um, creepy and strange. I'm really excited to read this one. And then this one I got when I was like grocery shopping. Um, I'd seen like lots of people reading it. I think it's on like Reese's, uh, Reese Witherspoon's book club. Um, but it was just five pound hardback in the grocery store so I thought it would be fun to pick up. It's Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce um, and it's one where, oh I've just seen that, like the, almost like the windows are kind of lit there, it's quite cute. Mm -hmm. um, it's one that's about uh, going to a sanatorium kind of in the mountains where it's snowy and I think they get stuck there. It's like The Shining but with more people I think. And in a sanatorium. And I've heard it's quite sort of detective y. Yeah, well. it's meant to be. It, yeah, I've only kind of just snuck it into this horror pile because I think it's actually more thriller, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I think horror it'd be adjacent. A fun read. I feel it might be a fun yeah. summer read. Mm -hmm. That's the horror. Shall we go fiction next, Bert? Yeah. I've actually only got one fiction. Oh. <laughs> and I got this one from Shelf Life our local radical bookstore. This is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Um, everyone's reading it, everyone's loving it. Uh, it was long listed or is long listed for the Women's Prize. Um, the Women's Prize, I think, hasn't been great in their statements. Um, people have been horrible. So we thought we wanted to buy it to support Tori Peters. We wanted to read it anyway. I much prefer the US cover to this. I don't really like this cover. What do you think? Yeah, it doesn't give, it, give anything away, does no. it? No. Carmen Maria Machado says, So good, I want to scream. As an aside, um, I've been listening to a podcast by Michelle T, um, which is amazing, called Your Magic. It's all about magic, but she has like celebrity guests on there. I listened to one yesterday where she had Phoebe Bridges on there talking about her witchiness, but she, Phoebe Bridges talked about Carmen Maria Machado in it as well. Mm. But anyway, I recommend that podcast if you haven't listened to it, it's really good. Young Adult. I've got two Young Adult books. I have got Bruised by Tanya Boteju. There we go. I love the colours. Um, I saw this on Sage's channel. I think they did like a books to look out for or books coming out soon at the sort of a little bit earlier on in the year. And then I recently saw on Son, <laughs> seen Andrea read it and really loved it. So I'm very excited to read it. Um, are they kind of like a roller derby team? Yeah, they mm. are. Uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be good. It's immersing um, Daya immersing herself in the world of roller derby. The more she realizes it's not the physical pain pe pain fest she was hoping for. Her rough and tumble teammates and their fans push her limits in ways she never imagined, bringing um, big truths about love, loss, strength and healing. I think it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Yay. I don't think I've hauled this one already. Um, this is These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. It's like a, a witchy young adult book um, set in Salem, Massachusetts. It's been around for a little while. Um, I think it's had like mixed reviews maybe. I'm doing some weird movements of the book. <laughs> there you go. That looks fun. Next is non-fiction. So non-fiction is also a massive pile. I have got Radiant Rest by Tracy Stanley. This is a yoga book. It's about yoga nidra for deep relaxation and awakened clarity. If you don't know yoga nidra, it's kind of like a yoga sleep. So um, if you... Uh, aren't able to or don't want to do like a kind of 
really physical yoga you can lie there and um you can get guided um it's like almost like a gu guided relaxation it's called yoga nidra and yeah it's really lovely so it's a book about that i've got i've got a couple of books which are for like um disability readers on for this month um and i've just started reading one to this one today this is disfigured on fairy tales disability and making space by amanda le duke so this is kind of it's obvious what it's about um but she's kind of drawing from her viewpoint as well as a uh, as someone i think she's got cerebral palsy so she's kind of drawing from her viewpoint and then mixing it in with um fairy tales as well and kind of i guess about how a lot of the, the evil people in the fairy tales have disabilities too so i've just started it and i think it's going to be great and i love the cover um disability visibility by alice wong um i know that everyone's been reading this one and i've heard it's amazing I might not have time to read it this month, but I will read it soon. And... <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know that I'm going to like it as well. It was also the um, book choice for uh, Sage's um, Patreon book club, I think, last month. And I didn't get around to buying it then because it was out of stock here. Um, and it's a collection of different essays from different people with um, disabilities and chronic illnesses. So I don't know what you think of this one. I thought this one looked really interesting. I found it on the travel table and um, it's called Ghostland in Search of a Haunted Country and it's by Edward Parnell. And it says that it's a moving meditation on memory, grief and loss and the redemptive power of stories and nature. So the author in his 30s, it says that he's had like there's been a lot of like family tragedy and he turns to his bookshelves finding comfort in the ghosts and wild places that obsessed him as a boy so i kind of it's got like a bit of like wicker man sort of stuff there um and it looks a little bit like it's uh, sort of drawing on that kind of folk horror type thing and then each chapter and there's lots of um pictures in it too quite a few images each chapter kind of goes to a different place um so like the first one is called lost heart and it's imr james and livermere cambridge and mcbride dickens rail disaster hemmingford and green no um i read kind of a couple of years ago a little bit about um dickens and that rail disaster which was really interesting um then one chapter which i thought looked good was like dark waters the fens and waterland i love the book waterland um and then the one another one that i was particularly interested in is um goblin city Macken and the great god Pan. So he goes to like Newport um, in, in Wales, which is near us, Gwent Stream Hills, London, the Toll of Tig, the White People, and the Halfway House. Um, I'm really interested in Macken. I read The Hill of Dreams. Did you read that one? Yeah, I think so. And it was kind of wild. Uh, so yeah, I think this looks good. I'm hoping that, you know, the voice is good because the actual sound of it is amazing this is also a good find but i found it in the sale section for a pound otherwise i probably wouldn't have bought it for a but for a pound definitely and i think it looks really interesting so it's called hammerhead the making of a carpenter by nina mclaughlin um blurred by Eden eden lepucky who i really like and it's about um a woman who decides to kind of give up her job and train to be a carpenter and i think it's so it's like a memoir about that but i think um kind of it sounds like it's going to be like a quite a you know like a well-written memoir and it also like says so she um takes inspiration from like people like mary oliver as well um yeah she quits her desk job becomes a carpenter amazing it sounds fun um and then these are all non-fiction as well but they were all from shelf life in cardiff which again is the vertical bookshop some of which when um i ordered when the shop was closed and then they delivered them and then a couple when I went in there this week. So I got a graphic memoir. And this is I Never Promised You a Rose Garden by Manny Murphy. I really love um, how it's set out. So it's about River Phoenix a little bit. But each section, each page is kind of like a, um, almost like a notebook with image and, and uh, writing. And it all, it's all the same all the way through. So this is about uh, Manny Murphy's 1990s teenage infatuation with the late actor River Phoenix, particularly around um, My Own Private Idaho. And then, as well as that, it kind of said it transforms into a remarkable sprawling account of the city of Portland and state of Oregon's long and shameful history of white nationalism. Uh, Lambda Literary has done a really good blurb on the back. 
Um, I really like the artwork. I think this is going to be amazing. Um, I think Bert saw it on Shelf Life's Instagram and then I saw it there and I bought it. I don't even know how much I paid for it because it doesn't have a price on it. <laughs> the other one I got when I was in the shop was How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell, Resisting the Attention Economy. I know that um, Charlotte from Bookish Mama Blooms really liked this one. Um, I have heard kind of quite mixed things about it as well. So it's about kind of, yeah, not doing stuff, I guess. Um, it was one that I really wanted to read and I'm, I had it on order from the library, but it was taken, I've had it on order from the library for about a year. <laughs> so I don't know if they were getting it. So it was, now it's come out in paperback. I have gone for it. Um, yeah, let me know if you've read it. I've got We Will Not Cancel Us, which is by Adrian Marie Brown. And it uh, says, and other dreams of transformative justice. It's from the Emergent Strategy series. I really like um, Adrian Marie Brown, who wrote Emergent Strategy. It's kind of about, I think it's about cancel culture, talking about, you know, the actual reason for counterculture, which is um, as a way for marginalised... Reason for counterculture. Oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for cancel culture, not counterculture. <laughs> cancel culture is originated as a way for marginalised and disempowered people to address harm and take down powerful abuses, often with help of social media. Um, it's seen by some as go having gone too far, but what is too far? when you're talking about imbalances of power and patterns of harm. So it's just like a little book, but I think it's going to be great. Um, I've got Close to the Knives by David Wojnarowicz. How do you say his name? Wojnarowicz. Yeah. So he... Um, I've got a picture of this on Instagram, and so many people said how much they loved this book. Um, he was an artist who died from AIDS, um, it's got an intro by Olivia Lang and I'm wondering if that's why it's sort of been I feel it's been reprinted because Olivia Lang talked about um, him in Lonely City so it was originally published in 1991 and this is from 2016 um, he apparently wrote six books his artwork is in lots of collections and he died from AIDS in 1992 but he attained national prominence as a writer and advocate for AIDS awareness so yes i've heard it's great i'm really excited to read it i've kind of had a little look at the text and it, it kind of um seems like a really great voice as well and and i really like you know i'm just really interested in his artwork too so it's that one i love this cover and uh, the title and the font everything about it and it's no modernism without lesbians by diana suami and this is about um Sylvia Beach, mainly about Sylvia Beach, Natalie Barney, Briar and Gertrude Stein and about how they were like kind of moves and shakers of a kind of modernist movement and I guess we're all lesbians. I think uh, this one sounds great. So a trailblazing publisher, patron of artists, a society hostess, a groundbreaking writer, all women who loved women, who rejected the patriarchy and made lives of their own, forming a community around themselves in Paris in the first half of the 20th century. I think that sounds so good. It was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, I love that green. I think this is Bert's favourite colour, other than brown. Yeah, it definitely used to be, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. but it loves a bit of Kelly green. Kelly green. And then my last book in this big haul is Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments, by Sadia Hartman, and this is Intimate Histories of Riotous, ba riotous Black Girls, Troubles Women and Queer Radicals. Um, I've actually had this one sort of on my TBR, on my wish list for a long time, and it's kind of um, finally come out in this smaller paperback, and um, I saw that Shelf and I've had it, had it, so picked it up. Um, and it's about uh, these black, black women who were kind of like trailblazers, really. So it says that... Um, the, at the dawn of the 20th century, the first generation of black women born after emancipation wanted wanted real freedom. So it's kind of said about like they were unrecognised avant-garde and their pursuit of liberty forged the modern world. I've seen that Anna Marie has recently, she'd been reading it and has recently finished it and really liked it. Um, yeah, that's that one. That is all the books. It was a lot of books. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any thoughts about any of these. Let me know if you think that was too many bucks or just the right amount. <laughs>
<laughs> Bert's also going to do a haul. We were going to do it together, but I there was just too much stuff. I've got so. just the right amount. You've got just the right amount. Yeah. Do I have slightly too many? No, there's okay. no such thing. There's no, no. Yeah. As, it, as I'm like surrounded in this like little cave <laughs> of books. So that's it. Um, yeah. Hope you're having a good day. Let me know what's happening. See you soon. Bye.